Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Matt Quigan. I'm here on the Garden State Pastors live streaming feed. Uh, we are the official streaming host of the 2021 Amateur Team East Tournament. We are lucky here to have today Mr. Mike Hoffpower, current president of the United States Chess Federation. Mr. Hoffpower is also national tournament director and FIDE arbiter. He has experience with several national level U.S. chess events, including in the scholastics, college, and military venues. Mr. Hoffbauer, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, I'm honored to be here, um, but I'm even more honored to, to you know, have had, I've, I've played this tournament before when it's over the board, and in some ways it's perhaps a bit fortunate that this one, in fact, is online because of the, the weather is not very good for travel right now up and down the East Coast and throughout, you know, most of the Midwest, so you know, players either trying to get home after an over-the-board tournament or trying to get to Jersey before the tournament would be experiencing, I think, some difficulties. So I think it's it's in some ways the, you know, Kaisa has smiled on us all and and had the tournament be, you know, online this year instead of over the board. But I also Absolutely. want, you know, I also want to congratulate uh, Steve Doyle and the crew for putting on another uh, excellent tournament. I understand you'll have, you know, over 100 teams that are playing, um, and that, and that's that's exciting. I'm happy to be here today. I, I couldn't agree, agree more. Team East is without a doubt one of my favorite tournaments I've been playing numerous times over the years, and we're I'm happy that it's continuing uh, despite the circumstances. Um, tell us a little bit how you first started getting involved in chess and then later on with the United States Chess Federation. Sure. Well, I started playing chess when I was in, you know, in junior high. And then when I got to high school, you know, we formed a, me and several other kids formed a, you know, a chess club. And we didn't know anything about U.S. Chess Federation. I had no idea what that was. Um, I knew that there were some schools in, you know, the same parish where I lived in Louisiana that had some players that were very strong. And one of them I later came to find out was right over 2,200. But um, um, so what we did was we started, you know, our, our high school chess club would contact whatever school we were playing in football or basketball that coming weekend. And, hey, do you all have a chess club? Yeah, sure. OK, well, let's get together and, you know, loser buys the pizza kind of thing. So that's, you know, that's kind of what I did in high school. And then um, I stopped playing chess when I got to college. And then when I joined the military, you know, as a uh, as an officer. I was too busy to really play much at all during my first four years or so in the military. Then I was able to make some time to do that and kind of picked up the game again. Um, and then when I had my first son, uh, when he was about three, I started you know teaching him and started taking him to tournaments when he was you know in kindergarten. And um, I just had ideas about the events and would talk to the tournament directors and they said, Hey, maybe you ought to become a tournament director. And so I did. And so here I am, you know, today, but that's, it all started as a chess parent uh, wanting to just help with the local tournaments, you know, down at the, down the street at the local school. And then uh, that, that grew into refereeing at, you know, state tournaments and the national champ, national scholastic championships, U S open, um, the, you know, the Pan American on the Pan American tournament for the college. I've directed that. I've run the U.S. military championships numerous times. I've even directed, you know, with feed, I've even directed at the international level. So it's it's been it's been a fun experience. I enjoy directing because I'm a lot better at it than I am at playing. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Well, we're, we're glad you're involved. As we all know, this this past year has been extremely difficult uh, on, on so many levels. Um, that being said, you know, uh, to echo your earlier point, we're really happy this tournament made it in an online format. Kaisa has smiled upon us. How is the USCF responding to that challenge and how are you kind of approaching that, uh, that obstacle? Well, I think, the, 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 you know, when, I, when, when COVID first started, you know, in March, I mean, it actually was starting, it was starting to ramp up in February, right. as we all remember of last right. year. And we actually, just barely got in under the wire our Virginia Scholastic Championships. I mean, literally the weekend before the nation shut down. I mean, wow. the weekend before. Wow. And um, about the second week 
into the COVID crisis, several of us, you know, when the, when the executive board and in, in, in U.S. and, you know, several other national tournament directors in U.S. chess had been talking about, hey, we're missing an opportunity here. The play has to go online or there will be no play. Um, so we got together and formed, you know, a, an official task force through U.S. chess to write some online chess regulations. And so that's now published as chapter 10 in the, you know, in the rule book. But that was a, you know, that was a, a project that went on from, you know, late March until about, you know, end of May, early June, we got that new chapter 10 written because what was in the U.S. chess rule book before was something that had been written eight, 10 years ago and was simply out of touch with reality. Right, right. Um, and so that's what, we, you know, our primary purpose was to update it, to make it not only match the technologies that are available, but also to match, you know, the, uh, you know, what has, what is, what's available now on the platforms that are out there, whether it's, you know, ICC, Chess24, Chess.com, or, you know, Lee Chess, and all the other strong vendors that are out there. Um, then the other step in that process was working with the chess vendors and encouraging them to submit their fair play methods for analysis by U.S. chess with the idea of hoping to endorse them. And if we can endorse them, that just gives tournament directors more of a leg to stand on in terms of selecting a specific platform right, to right. use. What, what are you using this weekend, ICC? I think that's one of them, right? Yeah. So the um, so we we leveraged the you know professional statisticians who are you know PhD level statisticians who are in the U.S. Chess Ratings Committee and leverage their expertise and knowledge to you know literally look under the hood, so to speak, after they you know they had to sign non disclosure agreements with those commercial companies, but they uh, looked under the hood and came back and provided a recommendation to U.S. Chess, you know, to the executive board where I'm the president. And the main thing we were looking for is, A, does the, does the methodology have a high probability of detecting someone who's violating fair play? Right. And B, does it have a very low probability of coming up with false positives? And fortunately, we've been, you know, very lucky that the, you know, the, the official complaints that have come up have uh, have all been very very strong cases in terms of um, you know the I mean it when, when you see a player who's over the board rating is 800 and they have a they play in a seven or eight round tournament you know and they win seven or eight of the games um, and their playing strength is 20 you know comes out as 2300 and higher and there's no blunders no mistakes you know I mean now nah, come on there's um, something going on there. Yeah, there's just something going on. And it's, you know, and it's not just, it's not just that, the, you know, the players is, oh, well, you know, the player, this player is just extremely talented, you know, and yeah, okay, yeah, Magnus Carlsen was too, and he is now, but he didn't, he didn't play when he was rated over the board, you know, right. 1200, he wasn't playing at a 2500 level in a tournament. But, um, uh, so that's been the two big things is, is, is really the fair play and getting some regulations in place to cover online, you know, online chess here in the U.S., or at least in the U.S. Chess Federation. So Awesome. Awesome. Well, I, I'm, I have many more questions about that, but just being mindful of time, I want to ask you one more question before we have to let you go. What's okay. the most rewarding, what's the most rewarding um, part of your work with the USCF? Uh, directing, by far. Uh, I mean, it's fun to be on the executive board and, you know, it's to put rules, policies, procedures, uh, you know, financial resources in place. But the, the real love for me is the, is directing the tournaments. Organizing and directing tournaments is the real love for me. That That's where the fun is. The rest of it's work, but that part's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Mr. Mike Hothpower is the president of the United States Chess Federation. And as he said, a, a passionate tournament director. Mr. Halfbauer, again, thank you so much for joining us today. We really do appreciate it. Yeah, and thanks for you all for, for doing this live stream. And, and again, congratulations and, and a big thank you to Steve Doyle and the whole team that's you know been put together to run this event. And I hope to 
the rest of the day goes well for everyone. So thank you very much. Thank you.